deal here. Let's go ahead and get going. Um, thanks for everyone for coming out today. We're going to have uh, uh, four programs uh, with official uh, signings here. We have two others that are on the road playing. Currently, baseball is up nine to seven on Bemidji. Um, in Bemidji, and uh, softball starts in about a half an hour down in uh, uh, Umary. Uh, they both will have signings. We'll have those releases sent out, but obviously coaches won't be here for that. Um, the four programs we do have are women's basketball, volleyball, track and field, um, and men's basketball. And uh, so we're going to start off with women's basketball today. Um, but they've signed seven student athletes. Um, and to talk about their incoming class is Sheila Green Gerding. Well, we're uh, really excited about um, our signings today. Um, we've got five incoming freshmen and two junior college kids, and. Amongst that group, uh, I think we've got a good blend of point guards, scoring guards, and posts. Um, so I think uh, the immediate future uh, looks good, and, and I think the future down the road looks good as well. So um, it's an exciting day for us. I think Coach Chaffin and uh, our staff have done a good job of uh, working hard on these kids. It's been a long time coming, waiting for this day to come. Uh, some of these kids have been recruiting since uh, last spring, so it's, it's nice to kind of have it all come to uh, fruition for us. So, um, I'd like to start out, of course, uh, we're really excited about getting uh, Maddie Wald from Bishop Ryan. Um, she has really been, I think, the uh, engine behind that team this past year and uh, really had a great career there. Has um, had some outstanding coaches in her career at Bishop Ryan. And, uh, you know, what more can you say about three state championships and that she was a, a big, big part of that. Uh, I think just watching Maddie this past year, I think Maddie played some of her best basketball in some of the biggest games um, and uh, really, really uh, continues to improve her game and become a better player um, every year. And we're excited about her future. I think that she's just tapping into her potential. Um, Jalen Newman is from Sawyer, North Dakota, played at Velva High School. Uh, we watched her the last two years at Williston State College. and. Uh, Jalen, I think at the end of this year, is, is really starting to kind of come into her own and uh, play up to her capabilities. Um, she's a little bit like Katie Hardy, we kind of say, with her ability to hit the outside shot. Um, she's got some good quickness, so she can get to the basket, and a very strong physical girl, so she'll be a good rebounder, good defender, and, and plays really hard. So uh, excited about her being able to add to our, uh, our post repertoire and um, excited about what she can do for us. And also nice to have uh, another North Dakota kid on our roster. Uh, it just seems like it's nice to have that, that loyalty to, to North Dakota playing in front of our hometown fans. And it'll be great to uh, have both those kids here. Um, in addition, we have uh, Shyla Carr, 5'9", shooting guard um, from Spokane, Washington. Uh, in Spokane, uh, she played in the 3A league, which is uh, second from the, the biggest league. and she. Uh, was an all-region player out there and an all-state player in the state of Washington. And um, Shyla averaged um, 17 points a game, shot the ball really well. Uh, she's a good shooter that understands the game, and I think that uh, Shyla is going to, you know, be able to help us uh, hopefully right away, and, and we'll have a good future here uh, as an incoming freshman because she played a very uh, good level of basketball out in Washington. Mariah Payne is a 5'7 uh, guard from Australia. Uh, Mariah is, uh, you know, again, you never really know when you see kids uh, on film, but from what we've seen on film, I think Mariah can pretty much do everything. She can shoot it outside, she can get to the basket. Uh, good distributor. Um, I think uh, the highest level of basketball in Australia is uh, like the U20s, uh, U18s when they're a little bit younger. And uh, in her U20, uh, national tournament, Mariah was the leading scorer, averaging 24 points a game. Um, so we're pretty excited and, and think that she's got a good future here as well. Um, she also averaged 18 points a game in high school and seven rebounds and four assists. So um, again, another talented kid that uh, will definitely help us in the guard position, can play multiple positions on the perimeter. Danielle Razari. Uh, Danielle is originally from uh, Clearbrook, Virginia, played for James Wood High School. 5'5", uh, five, five left-handed point guard. Uh, it's got really good quickness. Uh, knows how to use her left hand um, to get to the basket. Goes right equally well. 
Um, can shoot the outside shot and is a good distributor. She set the school record at her high school this year um, for single season assists. She averaged 10 points and six assists per game and was a four year starter. And I know that she has family ties back here in North Dakota, so it's kind of exciting for her and her family um, to be coming to Minot State and we're excited about uh, Danny joining us. Katie Headington is a 6'3 post player from Everett, Washington. Um, Katie is very, very big and strong and physical. Uh, she's got some work to do. Uh, we don't really expect Katie to come in and uh, be Northern Sun Player of the Year this year, but maybe down the road. Um, she's a big, strong body and uh, really is excited to learn and grow and um, become a, learn the college game and become a, a good post player in this league. So uh, we're excited about Katie and, and her joining us as well. Corey Yurick. Corey is a transfer from Trinidad State Junior College, 5'7 uh, guard, uh, can play mostly scoring guard. Uh, actually set her school record this year at junior college uh, for career points in the last two years. She's had big games of uh, 26 and 30 points and uh, averaged 17.6 points a game. Can shoot the three, can get to the basket, uh, draws a foul very well and shoots well from the free throw line. And uh, she'll give us some immediate scoring um, with her uh, experience here at the junior college level. She's a Pueblo, Colorado kid and a real tough kid. So. Uh, she kind of rounds out our, our recruiting class, and uh, we're just really excited about the uh, array of players. And uh, we kind of have, like I said, multiple positions, post guards, scoring guards, and uh, it kind of adds a little bit of upperclassmen as well as um, some freshmen, and just really excited. And I think the best part of all that is I just really think these are great kids. Um, they'll fit in well with, with what we do here at Minot State, very high character, uh, very, very uh, – good kids that are going to be an easy fit for Minot in our community. So uh, just a great day. Do you have the seven players uh, coming in? How many do you feel that can be impacted and be on the court next year in, in your game situation? I would say that about five of them have potential to uh, compete for us. Um, you know, I think that obviously I, I kind of have a rule that we just throw the ball out in the, in the fall and we write white wipe the uh, slate clean as far as I don't guarantee any of our starters starting positions. So uh, everybody has an equal shot at playing for us and it's really about who does their work in the summer, who comes in ready to go and what looks like is going to fit our team and what's going to be best for us next season. How about Maddie? Do you see her as a one or a two? You thought about her at all? Yeah, I think Maddie, uh, you know, she really developed as a point guard this year. Um, she played shooting guard her junior year and uh, a little bit her sophomore year, but um, I think she can play either position. I just really got comfortable watching her play point guard this year. Um, so I think that she can give us uh, definitely some uh, needed punch there. And uh, the one thing that, you know, you talk about with Maddie is you can see her skills on the court as far as being a good distributor, um, nice little pull-up jump shot, can get to the rim, uh, sees the court well. But, man, the one thing that sticks in my mind is her long, lanky arms on the top of that zone and how many steals she gets. and. Uh, the fact that her motor never stops. She just plays really, really hard all the time. Um, that's kind of right up my alley as a coach. How long have you been recruiting Maddie? Because certainly you, get, you got the chance to see her. She's right here in your backyard, and you can witness the success she had at Bishop Ryan. Uh, how long has she been on your radar? Well, she's been on our radar her whole career, um, especially probably most notably last year. I thought she really kind of came into um, her own last year as a scoring guard. Uh, excuse me, two years ago as a junior. And then this year, just we've, we've been talking to her and uh, watching her all year. And then I thought she played really, really good basketball at the state tournament and had a lot to do with her third state title. So um, just really excited that she's decided to uh, come to Minot State. How about Jalen um, transitioning from the junior college to the NSIC? How do you see that transition? Well, I think every kid has a transition. Um, they have to understand that uh, it's a very physical league. It's a very good league. Um, I think that on the offensive end, she's going to find herself matched up against bigger but maybe slower post players, um, and they're going to have to try to come out and guard her from 15 feet. She's got the ability to drive by people. I think that we'd be doing her a disservice to go sit her on the block and try to post up against 6'2", 6'3", in this league. Um, I think that she's a kid that plays hard and physically could probably meet the demands of the Northern Sun. But it's going to take some time to understand that. Uh, every kid's going to have to understand the back-to-back -back play and the grind of the season. Um, sometimes that's a mental thing. You might have it physically, but it's hard to get over it mentally. So uh, I think all those things are factors, and you don't really know until you know. Of the players that are listed here, it seems that three are coming from the junior college level. Do you appreciate a good mix? 
mix of kids coming out of high school and then kids who have already played a year or two of junior college ball? Yeah, but, but we only have two junior college kids. Okay. Um, Jalen Newman and uh, Corey Urich. Well, kind of like we said, we lost three seniors. And it's kind of nice to have a couple kids that have that junior college experience and the college experience, and they can come in and, and help us hopefully right away. And then you got freshmen that uh, some of them need some time, and they need to you know, get used to the college game, the speed of the game, the physical play. Uh, they need to get in the weight room. And so you know, with most, most freshmen, you expect that it takes them some time. But I think we've got a couple that will definitely come in and compete for us right away. How about you? I know you lose up. Polk sisters now and Katie's now done kind of have been the cornerstone of your team the last two to three, four years. Um, is this team coming in now, do you think has to find a new identity, a new leader, someone, kind of a new a new role, a new, a new place you go to take in? Well, you know, I think uh, you know, you look at like this year, Katie Hardy, Morgan Close, they they really uh, kind of were the leaders on our team. But I thought that towards the end of the season and all the injuries we endured, a lot of our juniors uh, really kind of stepped up in their leadership role, um, as well as Alex Haley, who was a sophomore, DeAndre Denton, uh, Amanda Sandsaver, Savannah Kingsbury, Sarah Lester. They're all kids that are, this is kind of their program now. Um, and they've got to try to step in and, and fill those shoes. And I say that gingerly because I say try. It's always hard when you lose your seniors. Um, there's always going to be some adjustment there. And, and those kids did a great job while they were here. So. Um, we just got to move forward and find out who we are. As far as you know, are most of the eligible returnees coming back? Uh, as far as I know, everybody's <laughs> coming back. Um, uh, the people that were on the court and played for us last year will be on the court playing for us this year. And uh, we had four kids that ended up redshirting. Uh, Caitlin McLaughlin actually played for us, but she got hurt. And uh, we're filing a hardship for her, so she would come in if she gets her hardship as a freshman again. Um, and obviously, Caitlin has proven that she can play. And I think that, uh, you know, if her rehab and everything so far is going good, she got to run yesterday, uh, she'll be able to step back on the court for us. And then we've got the other three freshmen that redshirted um, that will all be coming in to try to compete next year as well. All right. Well, we hope to put a good product on the, on the floor, and uh, it'll be exciting to see what these kids can do. So, thanks.